One side in our challenge today has money to lend, but is too cautious to do much with it. The other side needs money and gets it from less risk averse investors. What are these two sides? The first consists of the banks currently trading at a bargain price. The second consists of the so-called IPO's initial public offerings, which are in greater demand than ever before as the stock market soars to new highs. European banks currently on the stock markets probably the laggards. Bad reputation, zero interest rates, tight regulation and digital competition have forced banks to cut costs. Now interest rates are rising again, all by slowly. Do they get a second chance? And the opponent, the IPOs, like the banks celebrating their comeback 10 years after the financial crisis. Above all, new technologies are increasingly in the starting blocks for new issues. How attractive is an investment in these young companies? We start the challenge. And going to London to Giles Keating, I know we are both car fans, so we can look at a picture together. What comes to mind? Ah, oh, Aston Martin. Yes, well, of course, they've said that they're planning an IPO for this year. Yes, um, and I have to say, I really love Aston Martin, the vintage, the design. But British are building cars. I want to remember that Aston Martin in his history gone seven times bankruptcy. But now that the Italians and the Sheikhs from Kuwait are in charge, maybe the stock is worth a look. Yeah, look, I think it's probably not just the Italian and the Middle East influence. Also, they really have big plans. They're going to go into e-mobility and really, I think, build a supercar like the Tesla. Thank you, Giles. So let us take a look of the tops and flops of the past months in the IPO market. Snapchat, the US photo app, was probably the most famous flop of 2017, down 12% since it was issued. But the ebook platform China Literature was a hit, up 50%. And in Germany, the fintech provider Naga Group offered a bit of new market flair, growing by 310%. Investors also went for the delivery services Hero and HelloFresh, which gained 29 and 16 percent respectively. But Voltabox was a flop, minus 2 percent. And globally, there's plenty in the pipeline for 2018. Will Spotify do better than Snap? And Saudi Arabia wants to venture the biggest IPO in history, a hundred billion dollars. What with? Oil, of course. Robert Halver from the Bada Bank. Uh, sounds like the shock from the financial crisis has been overcome. The financial crisis is dead as the dodo and won't be revived. That ensures that the mood on financial markets will be very good, but interest rates will stay low, which means that conditions for new IPOs are especially good. And I can well imagine two sectors profiting from this positive sentiment. First, biotechnology, and second, everything connected with digitization. Truly the epical revolution of the coming years, if not decades. We had been in London, we had been in Frankfurt, and of course, as always, we go to Paris now to Valerie Planyol. Otherwise, always very cautious, but when it comes to IPOs, I see a little glow in your eyes, right? Yes, it is clear to me that uh, private equity funding and IPOs will be rising in the future. I think this is due to the combined impact of both reduction in bank lending due to heavier regulations and also the tech revolution that requires really specialized investors to help those new companies grow and access market funding uh, to become the next uh, blue chips. And then back to Giles Keating. Everything sounds very positive, but let's take a look back. How do such stocks develop against the general market? I think, Stefan, this really is the problem because, I mean, these are great companies, often with fantastic growth prospects. But the trouble is the pricing is often a bit on the high side. And actually, if you look at this chart of history in the US, you'll see that if you bought IPOs just after they've been launched, Often they do no better and sometimes worse than the general market. Lagging just a little behind the overall market, you can't say that about the other contender in today's challenge. It's much more extreme for the last decade. As the general market rose, the banks actually fell. And in Germany, everything began with an SMS. 
In July 2007, Jens Weidmann, chairman of the Bundesbank, wrote to Chancellor Angela Merkel, the IKB is in trouble. Merkel answered, what is the IKB? It was the moment when the spiral of rising interest rates and a crashing U.S. housing market reached Europe. And the IKB, the Industrie und Credit Bank, was only the first bank in Europe to get into difficulties. A mix of high write-offs, zero interest and increasing regulation spelled doom for several leading institutions. And those that survived were punished on the stock market. And here is the tragedy in numbers. The largest bank in Europe, HSBC, share price since the financial crisis minus 31%. BNP Paribas down 29%. Deutsche Bank down 76%. Credit Suisse 72%. Banco Santander down 57%. And Commerce Bank saved by the state from bankruptcy while still a full 94% in red. But in the year 2017, an increase of 70% from a very low level. But Giles Keating, is that the proper turning point? Yes, it could. They've really worked their way through most of their bad loans. They've rebuilt their capital bases. The economy is improving. And I do think that the worst of the political pressure on banks is now behind us. And on top of all of that, We've got interest rates starting to rise, and that does suggest that this is a good moment, really, for the banks to be able to move up a lot more. Valé Planyol in Paris, do you agree with this optimism? Well, not really. I mean, of course, the banks will be benefiting from a better economic activity altogether, but they are still struggling with much narrower profit margin, and I feel they are not through with all these heavy regulations coming in. I want to pass on the issue of regulation to Robert Halver from the Bada Bank and Wertstein Institute Fellow. Is that an issue that could prevent major price jumps by European banks? Unfortunately, it has to be said that political regulation is being greatly exaggerated. But it can also be said that the regulation is meanwhile reflected in the low prices of bank equities. Not much more can happen there. We should look at the positive aspects. At the end of the day, somewhat higher interest rates will help the banks over the hard times as regards yields. And now we ask the members of the Institute for their votes. I vote for IPOs. I'm not the greatest admirer of European banks, but I'm giving them a second chance. All the negative aspects are already priced in. And my vote now goes to European banks. So, although this one has been rather closely contested, on balance, with Robert and myself going for the banks and Valerie for the IPOs, it's European banks, the second chance, that wins, and that zeitgeist is now open for Wertstein investors. I don't know about you, but I also heard a lot of good arguments for IPOs here. If a zeitgeist loses in a challenge, that does not mean at Wertstein that we stop looking at the topic. So I'm sure the portfolio management team will still be keeping a close eye on the IPOs. And meanwhile, if you want to access a major stock market sector at a bargain price, you can add European banks to your portfolio.